Hey guys, I know I did a video last night stating why I'm back on YouTube, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an explanation as to why I was gone for so long, and then I want to get into some topics that I would really like to talk about. So, the reason why I was gone for so long was because... I had originally moved to Florida, not this past August, but the August before, and I was there for about six months. I went there for a couple reasons. One was that the warmer weather is better for my health because of my disability and my physical issues, the colder weather, the winter weather really bothers my muscles, my bones, my joints, all that stuff. So I was hoping that going to Florida would have been permanent thing would have been a better thing for me physically and that I would have been able to establish myself and my wrestling organization WCWA down there again and just keep on rolling but Circumstances beyond my control really just rose up and I ended up having to go back to where I grew up, which is where I'm living now. I'm staying currently with friends. I'm waiting on housing for disabled housing to be able to get a place of my own that's handicap accessible, but in between the last video I posted from Florida and now, um, I, like I said, I of course have moved back from Florida. I live in Connecticut once again. Um, it was and has been a crazy time. I've had to undergo several moves to different locations just because that seemed to be how it's going. And the other factor that kept me from really doing videos besides having to move and several times and all that different stuff is that um, health-wise I've been struggling more and more. My health has just been on somewhat of a decline for quite a while now. I'm dealing with more spasms. I'm dealing with a lot more pain in my back and my neck and I'm also dealing with the loss of feeling and function in my hands and arms and things like that. So I'm having to spend a lot of time resting. And when I'm not resting, trying to talk to doctors and figure out courses of action and what we're going to do. So that's why I've spent a lot of time away from YouTube. But as I stated last night, I don't plan on doing that any longer. I plan on making content for you, videos for you on a more 
frequent basis and just keeping going with my own channel here and with tag talkers so we'll see how it goes and I really hope you like the content I provide and I hope that you'll message me and let me know what you would like me to talk about because I will do that for you if it's in my wheelhouse if it's something I can talk about whether it be wrestling sports related um like I said I have some views on the world at large and I'm also going to bring up some topics that most people really don't consider but we'll see how it goes um now as far as wrestling the only wrestling that I've been really paying attention to on a constant basis is NXT. I watch every new episode. I've watched every special. Uh, now, when it comes to NXT itself, I will say that the current NXT roster, I think, is the best roster in the entire WWE. I really don't blame the people that are on NXT for not wanting to get called up to the so-called main roster because I think NXT is the best wrestling product in WWE. I really like the fact that Bayley is the women's champion. I do believe that her match, meaning Bayley's match, with Sasha Banks at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn back in August was the best women's wrestling match I have ever seen in my entire life and the best women's wrestling match and best wrestling match in WWE and maybe except for some New Japan stuff the best wrestling match I've seen all year from any company. I think that Bailey deserves a call up soon, but I hope it's not too soon because I would like to see Nia Jax develop into a much stronger heel, even stronger than she already is. And then Bailey can lose the title or drop the title to Nia Jax and then get called up to the main roster. I think that Nia Jax sh should be the next NXT Women's Champion because right now she is the best female heel talent on the NXT roster. The only person close to Nia Jax at this point would be Dana Brooke, but I don't think Dana Brooke is ready to hold the NXT Women's Championship at this point. Um, I will say that I really think that before Samoa Joe gets called up to the main roster, he needs to win the NXT championship because as much as I love Finn Balor as a talent and as a performer with everything he brings to the table, he is kind of sort of getting stale. 
I hate to say that, but that's how I feel. All of his matches seem to be becoming the same thing over and over again. Um, so I really would like to see Joe get the title and then have it f for a few months and once Hideo Itami comes back have Joe be the one that attacked Hideo back when Hideo got hurt and then have Hideo win the NXT championship from Joe and have Joe get called up. Now, as far as the NXT tag team division goes, this division is stacked. But I do believe that the powers that be at NXT have missed the boat on Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy becoming tag team champions because the best time to have done it they had two chances. It was either in Brooklyn, where the VOD villains won the tag team championships, or in London at TakeOver, and they lost there as well to Dash and Dawson. So, I have a feeling that Enzo and Kaz have, for now at least, lost a chance at becoming the NXT Tag Team Champions because I really do believe that the team on the rise in NXT and the team that should be not only contending but be the next NXT Tag Team Champions is Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. They are hot as a team. They're an amazing team. And... They deserve the tag straps. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that Dash and Dawson should be just tossed to the wayside. I believe they should be enhanced even more until they lose the titles. And then within the next six months, after they do the thing where they lose the titles and then put some, hopefully some other teams over or whatever, maybe get a call up to the main roster to be a tag team. I see a lot of promise in Dash and Dawson. They remind me of a lot of, a lot of the old school tag teams of the 80s. They remind me a lot of Arn Anderson and and only Anderson, and they remind me of, um, you know, Arn and Tolly Blanchard, the Brain Busters. They're not flashy, they're not fancy, but they're really, really good. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the whole... Sorry, spasm. The whole idea that I've heard people talk about that NXT is growing too fast and people are worried that NXT is going to flame out. I'm personally not worried that NXT is growing too fast. I think NXT is growing actually maybe even a tad too slow because the demand for NXT is just it's off the charts right now so for people to say NXT is growing too fast it's not growing too fast it, it NXT is the brand every aspiring wrestler especially any aspiring wrestler worth their weight wants to be at this moment in time. So, NXT, to me, is just fine. 
And as long as it keeps being managed the way it is, it's going to keep growing. And I think that if it keeps growing at the rate it is, by the end of this year, by the end of 2016, not only will it be seen as NXT, the developmental brand, it will be seen as a third brand and as a competing brand in many more respects to Raw and SmackDown. So, anyway guys, that's my video for today. Those are my thoughts on NXT. I will do another video soon talking about more stuff that I've wanted to get off my chest and with all that said, I'll catch you all later.